Unfortunately, I will not be going into the clutch side of this engine to fix that broken gear. The broken gear is part of the kickstart mechanism. So sorry about that, but I won't be doing this in this video. Maybe in the future. What we've got here is failure to communicate. But uh, both case halves cleaned up as best as I can. I got almost all of the old silicone gasket out of there. I've got this side all cut up, scraped up, and ready to go. I'm going to put the gasket sealer on. This is what I'm going to use. This is anaerobic. So I'm just going to take some of this and smear it all over the place here. What I like about this stuff is a little dab will do you. I have a long working time. It doesn't set up until I get the case together. The stuff that squishes out will stay a liquid and can be wiped off with a rag. There's uh, products out there that make this stuff set up more rapidly. I'm not going to use that here because this engine is going to be several days before it's reinstalled back on the bike. So I don't give it plenty of time to seal up. Plenty of time for me to uh, get this case back together without too much trouble. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease. Got a new uh, o ring there. So I'm just going to grease this o ring. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in these bearings where I flushed them out. So where they're not starting up dry. And I'm just going to set the two halves together here. And hope this works out the way it's supposed to. I've got this stud here. That's going to go on first. And then the counter shaft. Push it down as far as I can here. Gently tap, try to settle this in there. All those shafts have to line up into them bearings and everything. Alright, now I'm going to get the tool ready. Tusk crank puller installer. Comes with a couple parallels and some hardware. And then in this hardware we got some bolts. I'm going to find one that threads into the crank. That one. And then there's this cupped piece. You're going to put your bolt through there and then screw that down onto the crank. Now you're going to take the puller, loosen the nut all the way back, and then you're going to thread this collar piece into the bottom of the tool. Just going to thread it all the way until it stops. Put these two parallels in as close as they'll go. Make sure they're flat and they're not sitting on nothing. And then tighten this nut. Okay, just go around and torque all these down. Oil up this spacer here before you slip that back into the seal. Okay, now we can start putting stuff back together. Okay, so the shifter detent, we start with a small washer. It's on there first. And then there's this barrel thing around the spring that goes down. Now you have this bushing that goes into the detent. There's a notch in the detent that goes towards the hook of the spring and the nut for it. You don't drop this in the engine. A hole in this that lines up with that pin. Pull this down out of the way. Line that guy up. Allen cap screw that holds that down. Okay, now I'm shifting it. 
connectors first. Get this tight. Okay, there's an alignment dowel. We pulled it out of right here. Okay, this part needs cleaned up. I need to do that next. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the shifter bearing. Set the shifter down in there. A little oil on the shaft, never hurt. Slide this back on. Oh, we need a, we need a gas we need a gasket, don't we? All right, now the flywheel. There's a Woodruff key. Don't drop this in the engine. Line up the keyway in the flywheel here with the key. Take your bolt back in and torque that down. Take the uh, teddy bear looking shaped gasket and go ahead and stick it on here. Alright, let's get the new base gasket on here. I'm just going to use a bit of motor oil to lube the piston and the rings. You must not forget the timing chain guide. You'll know you're close because the piston will be coming up. You want the T mark lined up with that slot. Ooh, that's not the greatest fit in the world. Oh my god. I think I'm going to massage this gasket just a little bit. I'm going to add some clearance into this hole right here. I'm just going to take my little stick magnet here. I'm just going to reach down through the head and I'm going to grab the chain. bolts make sure they got the washers on them. Okay I'm going to torque these head bolts down on a crisscrossing pattern. Um, first step is 11 foot-pounds. I'm using an inch-pound torque wrench so this is going to be 132 inch-pounds. The next step is 34 foot-pounds. Okay these two 8 millimeter bolts up here they get torqued to 8.5. I'm using my inch pounds here so this is going to get set to 102. Alright let's get the camshaft set back in here. I'm going to pull all the slack on this side and line up the exhaust marks. Same thing over here. Pull all the slack from this side and then line up the intake marks. Okay now you got to count the pins between the exhaust mark on the front and the intake mark on the back so 32 pins is what you need to get. So you're going to start here 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way around 29, 30, 31, 32, and that's how you set the cam timing. Alright, this is how it should look. You should have the intake with the little IN up so you can read it, and these lines lined up with the case. And then on the same side with the exhaust, you want the little EX up so you can read it. If it's down here, it's backwards. And these two lines lined up. Your exhaust cam, of course, has the decompressor on it, so you know that's the exhaust. And you want the exhaust lobes pointing at the exhaust port, and you want the intake lobes pointing at the intake port, so they're away from each other. This is compression stroke, top dead center. Right now is where the spark has just happened, and the piston's getting ready to go back down. On its way up, the exhaust is going to open. So the exhaust should open first, the engine rotates this way. Okay, I put engine assembly lube on the cam and all the bearings in here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put the cam cap back on. And then there's a tightening sequence in here. It's stamped right into this piece. So it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna follow this, tightening this up. All right, at this point, go ahead and install your timing chain tensioners and crank the engine over and make sure everything rolls over smooth. We heard the decompressor click. Everything's turning over smooth. Go ahead and set this back on the top dead center on the compression stroke. Now we need to check the valve lash. The exhaust, the spec here is 0.15 millimeters to 0.24 millimeters, six thousandths to ten thousandths. Feels like that's about nine thousandths. This one's at seven. Now the intake, 0.1 millimeter to 0.19 millimeter, or four thousandths to seven thousandths. So I'm just going to start with the four thousandths or 0.1. Yeah, it slides in there easy. Here's 0.13 or five thousandths. It just won't fit in there. So I'm going to say that's just in between. That These are all in spec. This is good to go. Alright, this is the valve shim adjustment chart for the intake and exhaust valves. Go ahead and pause this and check this out. So I'm blue Loctite on the cam sprocket bolts. I'm just going to use my ratchet down here on the crank to hold the motor while I tighten this. Make sure you clean any oil you got on the threads. Because if there's oil on the threads, the Loctite won't do anything. Okay, we'll go ahead and stick the cam cover back on now. Where is my 10 millimeter? Why is it always the one? Aha. Uh -huh. These don't go very tight. Just go like... Go too much on those, you got a problem. Alright, let's stick these two plugs back in here. Alright, last but not least, we've got to put this oil tube back on. Get the Kickstarter, we're gonna put the Kickstarter back on. Wherever that went. Alright, we got a coolant pipe to reinstall. Alright, so the moment we've all been waiting for, the reason why we're here, the drain screw. Let's get this thing in here. Um Well, that don't thread in there. So, for some reason, this has Imperial threads in it. This is 3816, which uh, I'm not sure is supposed to be here. But at any rate, if you don't have a bolt, you make a bolt. Where did the ratchet go? Well, I didn't eat it. Where's the ratchet? Why did that disappear? Aha. Uh -huh. So, this is a 3816 bolt. The thread's in here just fine. So, I cut a groove on the lathe for the O-ring, the crush washer, bored a hole for a magnet, and faced off the flange of this. So, can we finally plug this hole? Oh my god! I was here for that. Well, I got the KLX all put back together. Hopefully it'll hold some oil in it now. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.